Greetings and welcome to another edition of Political Empire. I'm your host, Kim Pearsall, with the Press Enterprise and PE.com. And uh, we're going to talk a bit about an interesting phenomenon this year with cross-party endorsements in some of these races where there are either two Democrats or two Republicans. And then we're going to talk to Ben Goad, our correspondent, who spent two whole weeks at first the Republican convention, then the Democratic convention. And we're going to basically get his uh, summary of all that occurred. So first off, cross-party endorsements. Steve Clute, the former Democratic assemblyman who lost in a primary race, that pitted him against fellow Democrat Richard Roth and Republican incumbent Jeff Miller has endorsed the Republican in that race. Uh, Clute's endorsement may be evidence of lingering hard feelings after a hard-fought primary, after which he said of his own party, quote, I was surprised Democrats could be so vicious in taking me on. Cross-party endorsements aren't only happening here in a race for a San Gabriel Valley congressional seat pitting two Democrats against each other, both incumbents whose districts have been redrawn to include both. One Democrat, Howard Berman, has gotten high-profile endorsements from Republican Senator John McCain of Arizona, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, and Independent Senator Joe Lieberman of Connecticut. So apparently everybody's getting along. Uh, now we're going to go to Ben Goad in Washington, D.C., who's going to tell us a little bit about the conventions uh, it's been a couple weeks since the confetti was swept up and Clint Eastwood turned an empty chair into a pop culture icon. Uh, but through both weeks, Ben was there to witness it all. Uh, ben, how are you doing today? Doing great. Fantastic. Yeah, great. Um, so as we enter the home stretch of the 2012 presidential race, uh, tell us a little bit about who may have earned the bump after the convention. Did Democrats get the last word or did the Republicans gain more in polls? What was the result of the two conventions? Well, you know, as we discussed after uh, the Republican National Convention in Tampa, uh, Governor Romney was credited with with getting a, a significant, uh, you know, maybe three or four point bump uh, fr from uh, from from their convention, uh, highlighted, I thought, by uh, Paul Ryan's speech on the second to last night. Uh, Governor Romney's speech, I thought, was safe, as I as I thought President Barack Obama's uh, speech was safe, but. But he, uh, like Romney, uh, had the advantage of some, some good speakers going before him. Uh, President Bill Clinton was widely credited with having the, the best speech uh, overall of the two-week period. That's kind of what I thought. And uh, he similarly got a little, a little uh, bump after, after uh, their convention in Charlotte. And now uh, national polls have uh, President Obama up maybe three points. That's an uh, amalgamation of several polls uh, suggests that he has a, a slight lead right now. And you were mentioning uh, Bill Clinton's speech as being uh, widely credited as being one of the best speeches of the uh, two conventions. What were some of the other highlights of the Republican <laughs> convention and the Democratic convention? Yeah, uh, for the Republicans, who at first, you know, I thought Ann Romney gave a, a very good speech uh, and really uh, was able to um, introduce herself to an electorate that, that really doesn't know much about Romney's uh, private life. And uh, she was able to tell some personal stories about uh, Romney, who's been portrayed as, as being, you know, sort of very rigid and, uh, you know, associated with evil business and, and that sort of thing. So I think she was effective. Uh, on the Democratic side, uh, aside from Clinton, I thought uh, Jennifer Granholm from Michigan gave a very good speech. Uh, John Kerry had uh, the line of the, the convention, uh, ask Osama bin Laden whether he's better off than he was four years ago. Uh, and so, you know, there was, there was a lot of highlights, but, but as I said, I thought both of the candidates uh, gave very safe speeches, uh, didn't really uh, take a, a big risk and, and therefore didn't get a big uh, reward. And for the two weeks, uh, for both the Republican and the Democratic Convention, you were hanging out with the California delegates. Any expectation that those delegates, or rather the entire state, will ever see Romney or Obama again during this election uh, cycle, considering we're not really a swing state? Well, um, if we're talking about inland Southern California, I think uh, residents are much, far more likely to see uh, Romney make a swing through. He's already been through once. Uh, during this cycle, and, and he's visited the region before, uh, Republican candidates traditionally treat the Inland Empire as a ATM machine, you know, not a place to hold a lot of public events, but certainly one where there's a, a base of donors where the, that they can, they can tap into. As for Obama, he'll make several uh, trips probably to, to California, but will most likely limit them to 
the Los Angeles area or the, the Bay Area. Um, as far as we can tell, the president has yet to set foot within Riverside or San Bernardino counties during either his uh, presidency or, or the run-up before the 08 election. Hmm, interesting. Well, Ben, thanks so much for giving us an update on your take on the conventions and what happened for the past two weeks and what you foresee for the upcoming campaign. And thanks to you for watching it, another edition of Political Empire. We'll see you tomorrow, and be sure to check back for all the latest Political Empire news.